Do you also want to make an old Nintendo console for less than $20? You could play thousands of old NES games and get the same nostalgia that I had when I've played them once again. All we need are a few components. Make some simple connections for some buttons and other modules. Download and upload the NES games to an SD card. Upload the Arduino code and play the games. And obviously have some fun. I've been testing this project for a long time because I wasn't able to make the code work, but I finally did it by trial and error. By the way, this project was made by the user called Natalis on GitHub, but for some reason his profile is not active anymore. But anyway, a huge thank you to Natalis for his great work, and please consider checking his YouTube channel. Anyway, that being said, let's see what we need, how to adjust the code, how to get the NES games for free and make a crude and homemade Nintendo console. So guys, let's get started. My new project was requiring some flexible PCBs, and PCBWay was the right solution for that. And the order process is so simple, just go to PCBWay.com and select flexible PCBs. Upload your Gerber files as always and select your settings directly on their website. You also have the option for rigid flex PCBs if you want, and other settings for the color, the thickness, the gold immersion and so on. I received my PCBs in just a couple of days and they look amazing. The tracks are very small but even so, PCBWay did a great job and they have capabilities that go even lower than that and you could check them on their website. So try yourself their services for flexible PCBs like mine and like that you can complete your awesome project. And check more for other services for prototyping PCBs, automatic assembly, SMD stencil and much more on PCBWay.com. What's up my friends, welcome back. I've made this project on a breadboard because it was a total headache to make, so I had to make a lot of trial and error. But don't worry, I'm working on a PCB as well, so it will look a lot better and be easier to assemble. Anyway, let's start and see what we need. The main part running the code is an ESP32 microcontroller, but to make it easier to program and so on, we use a development board with a USB connector like this one. This will cost you only 3 to 4 dollars on AliExpress. Next we need a TFT display and this costs you around 3 dollars. I will use this one that is based on the ST7789IC. And here is where the problem started. Because all these screens are based on the same IC and they look kind of the same. As you can see on the back they use the same IC, but sometimes it's a second version. But from all this the only one that works is this one here, and it took me a while to realize, and I was already getting frustrated. Some displays have the chip select pin, and some others don't. Some will have 240 resolution, and others will have 280 and so on. So have in mind that this is the one that worked for me so make sure that you order the same. The links are below. Next we need an SD card reader like this one, and this will cost you around $2. It could be both the micro SD card reader or the normal SD card, because the pins are the same. And together with this we also need an empty SD card to put the games on it. And then for the sounds we need this decoder, that is based on the PCM5102IC and I bought this with $5. And to this module we can add some headphones. Or even better we can solder a small amplifier with a speaker like this one, so you should also order this as well. And finally we need 7 push buttons, 7 10k resistors, a 100 nanofarad capacitor, some wires and a breadboard to make the connections on it. But if you want, you could also solder everything on a prototyping PCB like this one and make it more permanent. Remember that you could get the design for such a prototyping PCB from my website and order it at PCBWay. Ok, so now we have everything that we need, so let's assemble it. The original schematic was something like these two circuits. 
but this one didn't work for me, and it was very difficult to follow the lines where each connection will go. So finally the connections that I've used are this one here. For some reason if you use any other pin for the push buttons for example, the code won't work. And I don't know why, but after weeks of trial and error and getting frustrated, it finally works. Also if I remove the 100 nanofarad capacitor between ground and the CS pin, the screen will get crazy and even stop working. And another error that I've noticed is that sometimes the start button does the same as the left button, and I don't know why neither. Anyway connect everything on the breadboard or on the PCB like in this schematic. The MISO and the MOSI pins for the display must be the ones that I've used, otherwise it won't communicate with the SPI port. Ok so now let's take a look at the code. If you scroll down you will see that first we need to install these two libraries. And you can download this from below on electronics.com in order to make sure that you use the same that I've used. Then in the Arduino IDE you go to sketch, include library, add the zip library and select one by one the downloaded libraries in a zip format. And now the libraries are installed. Then if you don't have them, you need to install the ESP32 boards. So in the Arduino IDE you go to preferences. In the additional URLs you have to copy and paste this link. You can copy this link from the tutorial website. Now you can go to tools, to boards and select boards manager. And here you search for the ESP32. Select these boards and click install and as you can see I already have them installed. And now if you go once again to tools, to boards, you will see that now we have a bunch of ESP32 based boards. Select the ESP32 dev module board and make sure that you have this configuration as well as you can see here. So click compile. If it compiles we upload it to the ESP32 board. So click upload and press the boot button and keep it pressed till you can see the connecting message on the Arduino IDE. And then release the button and the code will be uploaded. If you pour on the console at this point, you will get the SD card fail message. And that's because we have no games inserted. So for that we go to this website and search for any game that you want. Download the NES file. Then insert the SD card into your PC and make sure that it's empty. Create a new folder and you have to call it NES like this. Now copy all the NES files that you want inside of this folder. Now get the SD card and insert it into the card reader and restart the ESP32. And now it works. Now use the buttons to select any game and press start. And now play and enjoy. In my case I select one of my favorites from my childhood, that is called Battle City. Now let's try the old school Mario game. You could also play Tetris, Contra or any other game from this website. So guys that's how you could make your own NES console and play any game that you want. And obviously this could go better with a custom made PCB, some better push buttons and also a 3D printed case, but that will probably be for a future update. And by the way this project also has an AV video output, so you could connect it to an old TV as we had back in the day with the yellow connector. And again a huge thank you to Natalis for sharing such a project with the community. His work is amazing and brings me a lot of happy memories. 
So thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was the video for this week. I hope that you like it. And as always, the most important part for me is that you have learned something new. And I would like to thank you to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon because that for me is huge. And by the way, if you would like to support my projects, you have all my links below for this Patreon page, for my social media, for my shop and so on. So thanks again and see you later guys.